Okay, YouTube. So it's time to cover some basics about uh, you know what uh, what I do when I bring a vehicle in for the first time here. Uh, try and get it ready to go. So uh, if you watched the video before, then you'll know that what we got is a uh, '89 Ford Ranger that uh, has been sitting for most likely between uh, eight to nine years. Um, so what we're going to do here is kind of figure out if it's worth going into or doing anything with. And uh, we're just going to see, you know, if it's trash or if it's uh, or if it's going to be roadworthy. So obviously, the first thing I got to do is get it in the garage, which it, uh, you know, apparently is. Um, apparently, Kayla's coming in to visit. No, I got it. Oh, you getting out of here? Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, you going to work out? Yeah. Okay. Have fun. Yep, we'll see ya. Shelby, Shelby come. Shelby, Shelby, Shelby come. Shelby, Shelby come. Okay, so getting back on track here. So I got it in the garage, Kayla and I, uh, so we spent a night just kind of, kind of going through it and checking things out. Um, the very first thing mechanically that, that I do is I go through and I'll check, this being a four wheel drive, it's got a front differential obviously, check all the fluids, everywhere in the vehicle. We look for any contamination, we look for any massive leaks, major leaks, any signs of, uh, of mechanical damage. Obviously, I, uh, mechanical damage being, you know, the, having the potential to be expensive and making the vehicle not worth uh, putting back together. Um, it helps a little bit to know some of the inherent flaws of some of the motors that, uh, that you're going to deal with. This happens to be a 2.9 V6. Uh, which is very well known for uh, for its blown head gaskets. Um, one of the things that I noticed right off when I popped the hood is that the valve covers are pretty awful clean. I also noticed that in the back seat uh, that obviously aside from oh here we go Let's see forward aside from the uh, previous owner's love of coat hangers there is a set of cylinder heads here um, and there was a set of uh, head bolts I don't see any evidence of any gaskets laying around or anything which uh, indicates to me that uh, probably that um, which indicates to me that probably that head gasket issue has either been addressed or is still an issue. Um, so kind of gives you a basic direction of what to look for and where to go with it. All the fluids are good though. Uh, everything kind of checks out all right just on a visual. And so now we just need to see if this motor is uh, you know, going to be worthy of trying to resurrect or if we're just going to take this thing to the crusher. So when I pulled the dipstick, I did see that the oil was very clean. I also noted that uh, that there was plenty of coolant in the radiator, which indicates should indicate that there's no leakage into the into the uh, the cylinders. Um, didn't notice any milk on the oil on the end of the dipstick there when I pulled the dipstick. Um, so we're kind of hoping for the best. Uh, it also uh, doesn't have any brake fluid in it, and there is no brakes. But that's something that we'll address at a later time. So moving on you can see we've got this handy dandy spark tester here and what we're going to do is we are going to take a spark plug wire off and we're going to attach said handy dandy spark tester one end to the plug and the other end to the wire that I seem to have lost. What I really need to do is uh, get Shelby some opposable thumbs so she can hold the camera for me. <clears throat> Either that or just get another tripod. Um, might make uh, some of this a little easier. But I put a new battery in it. I also, uh, also fixed the um, ignition switch. That was a problem as well. And hopefully I'll be able to crank this over without the camera falling down. And you guys can see this spark tester in action. And we can check if we got spark. Um, 
if I can get the right view on it, which is apparently more difficult than I had anticipated. Okay, so there you should be able to see. So we're going to watch that spark tester right there for a spark as I crank it over. Now, hopefully, <clears throat> if this video turns out right, you guys will have seen that there is spark there. I've already done some minor testing. One of the things that I did notice and is pretty going to be pretty common with a vehicle that has sat for a long period of time, uh, at least fuel-injected vehicles, is that when I turn on the key and turn down the radio, I can hear the fuel pump relay clicking. I don't know if you'll be able to hear that in the background, but it is. But I also don't hear the fuel pump turning on, um, which leads us to suspect that, that it possibly has a uh, bad fuel pump, um, which, like I said, would not be incredibly uncommon uh, for a vehicle that has sat for the amount of time. Shelby approves that this vehicle has. So... Seeing that it has spark and that it doesn't fire up, obviously there's a few things that make a motor run. There's spark, compression, um, and fuel. And if you can complete that triangle of things, then a vehicle should, typically speaking, run. Um, since I don't have another set of hands and Shelby has not grown opposable thumbs yet, I am going to show you kind of a quick and dirty, you know, I don't know if it's the right way, but it is a way that I have used in order to... Uh, to try and introduce some fuel into the motor. Uh, what I got here is a can of just 40, 40 to 1 mix gas, which it'll be fine, given that we're not going to suck a whole bunch of fuel into it. Um, and we're going to take a vacuum line and we're going to run it over here into this can. What will happen is there will be vacuum in that intake port uh, it'll suck the fuel up into the intake and we'll at least get an idea if this thing is going to fire and do what it needs to do. So, without further ado, we're going to give that a shot. Now, as you can see, vehicle fired up. Uh, one of the consequences of doing this this way, however, is that it's going to suck an unmetered amount of fuel into the engine and it will flood it. So you won't be able to run it very long. It's just going to kind of give you a, a general idea of uh, whether or not... Um, whether, you, whether or not you've got a vehicle that's capable of running um, or whether you've got just garbage or a different problem or something else that we need to look into. So what I'm going to do now, since I have most likely flooded it, is uh, I am going to get in the pickup, put my foot feet to the floor, or at least halfway down, and see if we can get it to run for an extended period of time. Or by extended, I mean by for a few seconds. Long enough to note that we're building oil pressure, and that we are also uh, not uh, knocking, or you know that there's not angry midgets in the oil pan. So, here we go. Okay. We built oil pressure. The motor actually sounded pretty reasonable for a 2.9. These are known for being a little bit clattery. They make some noise. And this one sounded pretty decent. So we can uh, safely assume that this motor is worth saving. Now, like I said, I've already kind of done some of this stuff already. And uh, so I had prepped up for it. And what I have there is a new fuel pump ready to go in it. And so what I am going to do is uh, rather than crawling around on the floor any more than I have to because 
The underside of the pickup is rather muddy. And every time I get on the floor, Shelby crawls on me uh, and makes things really difficult to do. We are going to clean the garbage out of the back of this box, and I'm going to remove this box liner, and then I'm going to undo the, uh, the bed bolts and slide the bed backwards so that I can replace the fuel pump from the, from the top. Uh, I don't know for sure that this is going to work, but it's what we're going to try to make things a little easier. Um, so, I guess, uh, I'm going to put on some Grand Tour Nation or some roadkill or something else of that nature and uh, I'm gonna get to work so stay tuned and we'll see if we can't uh, make this thing move and run and drive and do all of the pickupy things that it should do